Hello, my name is Kelly Wayman with FindingTimeToCreate.com. Welcome to this Craft Along class on the Silhouette YouTube channel. Make sure you like and subscribe so you get future notifications of other classes and content that we release. Uh, today, we are going to be doing a kind of a Christmas in July project. So this is a Christmas peony wreath and uh, I've made it so you can make the peonies and you can have little holly leaves so it can be done for a Christmas project. But if you want to make it for any other season, you don't have to use the holly leaves. You can just do more of the peony leaves. So that's what we're making today. And let me go over the supplies we'll be using. We will be using a Cameo machine because we want the 12 by 12 inch width. Uh, but you can do it on a smaller machine like a portrait if you divide the design up and don't uh, use the full 12 by 12 inch area. Um, the type of paper I'm using for this project is actually a uh, metallic cardstock. We're going to use a, a red, a green, and a white. This is, it's actually not even cardstock, it is a text weight paper that's got kind of a metallic sheen, but you can absolutely do this also on plain uh, 65 pound medium weight cardstock. So that's Either, was, either one is an option for you. If you want to turn this into a wreath, I'm using a 10 inch metal hoop. As far as uh, tools, we're going to use some needle nose pliers. Make sure it has a cutting edge because we will be using cutting some wire. Uh, this is a steel ball shaping tool. You don't have to use this, but I find it's really handy for paper flowers. So um, any size, this size is about, uh, about a half inch wide on the larger end, but you can use different sizes. We are going to use a silhouette scraper tool that's going to help us shape our petals and leaves. And then for the mechanics, we're going to use bind wire. Uh, this is just a thin wire. It bends really easily and it's paper covered and you're going to want a green paper covered. This comes in several colors. We're going to use 18 gauge wire. Uh, if you're going to make this onto a stem, you're going to probably want this to be a paper covered wire. If it's only going onto the wreath itself, you won't really see the wire. Um, so it doesn't matter if it's paper covered, but 18 gauge is a good thickness for your wire. And then we're also going to use water. So make sure you've got a little spray bottle full of water. And we are going to use a hot glue gun, a high temperature hot glue gun. And then we might use a little bit of just a strong white glue. So that should be it as far as uh, materials and supplies you're gonna need. You will use a cutting mat and a blade with the machine. And let's go ahead and go into the software. Here we are in the Silhouette Studio software, and we are going to be using a design called the Christmas Peony Wreath. So let's go ahead and go to the library. If you need to purchase it, it is design ID number 445193. I've already purchased it, and so it's automatically loaded into my library into the recent downloads folder. So I'll just double click to open that. And here it is open on the screen. Let's make sure that our machine and page setup is uh, matching what we're using. So my machine is set to my Cameo 4. Uh, auto feed type, I want to use a Cameo 12 by 12 inch cutting mat. And my media size I'm using is 12 inches by 12 inches. So that's all uh, the way I want it. Let's go ahead and move the things we don't want to cut off of the screen or off of the virtual mat. Now this design actually has, uh, if I move it over, you can see those centers are not grouped. So I'm going to undo. Those centers are optional. You don't necessarily have to use those centers on this design, but if you do, just the little tiny hole in the middle, Let's select all of that and click group. Now once that's grouped, I can just choose center to page because I know it fits within the 12 inch margin. 
and that's really all we need to do. Anything off to the side is not going to uh, cut, so only things on my virtual cutting mat are going to cut. So let's go to the Send tab, and I am using, uh, I mentioned with the supplies, I'm using a metallic or frosted paper. If you are using a plain cardstock, you can choose so maybe cardstock plain or pattern paper. Uh, if you're using a medium weight cardstock like 65 pound, you'll want your blade depth on three or four, your force on 30, and your speed on about five. However, we are using a lighter weight cardstock or a text weight paper. It's not even cardstock. So for that, my settings are actually going to be on a blade depth of two a force of 20, speed is five, passes is one, and I'm gonna check the box for line segment overcut. So you can always change your settings based on your paper. You would wanna do a test cut and make sure that that's gonna work for you. Um, there's lots of areas up here you can do a test cut or just use the built-in test cut. I've already tested my paper, and so I know this is gonna work. Um, we will go ahead now and load the machine. So I've got my 12 inch cutting mat. I peel off the protective sheet. And I'll grab my paper. Since it's 12 by 12, it's easy to match up against the grid. And I've already got my blade installed and I have my roller set all the way to the 12 inch cutting mat width. And I'll just load this for the left edge of the mat lined up on that loading guide. And so now I can just go back to the software and click send. So those are cut out. I'm gonna bend that a little bit, make sure those cut cleanly. Looks like they did. So I'll unload that. And now, I'll just take these layers of petals off the mat. It helps to flip the mat over or you can run it along the edge of a table to kind of get those started pulling off. All right, so when you're done, you will have uh, six of these more little frilly layers and two of these more plain and slightly larger layers. So these are all gonna get stacked next to each other and those two will be done at the end. And when you take your paper off, um, we may be using a little bit um, in the construction of the Peony, so don't throw this away immediately. And make sure that you get all of the little uh, holes that got left behind off of your mat. And the scraper tool helps with that. All right, and then next you would cut three, if you're doing the wreath with three peonies on there, you would cut the same design two more times on the red. Um, I've already done that, so we'll move on to the green. I'll just get my green loaded and then I'll show you how to switch that in the software. All right, so back in the software, we'll go to the design page and we will move this off to the side. And if I just click on the green and click center to page, that will bring everything onto this 12 by 12 inch uh, cutting mat. 
Now, as I mentioned before, there are holly leaves on this design in case you want to turn it into a Christmas wreath. If you want to make this not a Christmas wreath, what you could do is just ungroup these uh, holly leaves and select them and move them off. And then you can just duplicate um, these larger top three peony leaves and see how many you can fit on the page. I do not want to uh, cut just the peony leaves. I do want to cut the holly leaves. So I'm just gonna click undo and put those back the way they were. All right, so those are on the page. And now, same thing as before, I've already tested this paper and those settings have stayed there so I can just click send. All right, so there's our page of greenery for the wreath. And while you should make three, cut three pages worth of the peonies if you want three peonies on your uh, wreath, this single page of green should be enough for one wreath, although you can absolutely cut more if you want more, if you want it to be more filled out. So I'm just peeling off all of the holly leaves and putting them on a pie in a pile. So I'm just going to grab a little scrap of this frosted white paper and put it up here and I'll show you just how in the software you can set that up to make sure it's only cutting on this white paper. So I can see that it goes uh, six inches over and if I'm putting it in this top area I've only got one inch down. Um, that I can use. I'm just going by the grid that I can see underneath there. So I'll load that and then show you in the software. All right, so in the software, we will group those again. Move the white over. It's a little hard to see. Um, I'm gonna set this to 0, 0.0 line point size so I can see that better. And I also want to turn on my grid. So if I just tap the letter G, that'll turn on my grid. And I can use this drag to zoom function and zoom in. And we said that we had six inches, which is right here, the middle of the uh, page. And we could go down one inch on this last flower. So. Uh, if I thought that wasn't going to fit, I could just ungroup it and move this last flower over where I know there was more paper available. So if I zoom back out, fit to page, you can see, oh, that was actually the five inch mark. So it should fit over here just, well, yep, leave it where it was. So that's how I would set it up to, set, to cut on the scrap paper and then back to the send panel. Uh, I know once my paper's loaded and uh, the paper's on there and the mat's loaded, I could click send. I'm not going to do that. We've already shown it twice. So let's go just move on to assembly. Okay, so I have all of my red pieces here. I've got my green pieces and I've got some of the white flowers already cut um, and I can show you those in a minute. But let's start with our red petals. So we're gonna use some water and an 18 gauge wire, grab my wire cutters, scraper tool, ball tool, all of those things we're gonna use. And since I'm using the ball tool, I'm also gonna grab a soft surface. This is just a piece of craft foam, but you just need something a little bit soft. Even layers of paper towels would, would probably work well enough. Um, what we're going to do is start with shaping these largest petals first. So, I'm going to grab the scraper tool. It doesn't matter which side is up. It's a clean cut. And so, um, typically, I will take the side that was cut and flip it upside down and just drag my scraper tool along here. If the leaves are not delicate or the petals are not delicate, you can just kind of drag across. Once we get into more delicate 
shapes will more do more of an action where we're dragging the thumb across so we don't tear anything. But these larger petals, you can just kind of drag across like you're using curling ribbon and a pair of scissors if you've ever done that. All right, so that's one of the larger petals. And I'll do that with the other petals on the large petal set. And then that gives us our cupping shape, but I want to give a little bit of um, more curling at the ends of this each petal. And so I'm going to kind of roll my ball tool along the edges and the ends of each petal. And that's kind of going to give a little bit of crumpling, but it also gives the curling. And the overall look of this peony is going to have a little bit of a crumpled look to it. And that is um, actually just great for a peony. They do kind of look, even the real ones, look a little bit like crumpled paper. So I'm just rolling them my ball tool. And this can be any size of ball tool. I've used larger ends and I've used smaller ends and it all turns out about the same. You might need to work it a little bit more if you're using a heavier cardstock. So those, you can see it all kind of folds in towards the center and that's the look I'm going for. So we'll do that again with this other large petal set. Kind of get the sides and the ends. If you don't have a ball shaping tool, you can absolutely just leave that curled in from your scraper tool and you don't need to have that crumpled look uh, if you don't have a ball tool, it's totally fine. Uh, another thing you can do if you want your uh, this not to be quite so rounded in is you can flip it over and use your ball tool just right in the center and that kind of flattens it out in the center but still lets it cup inward. So those are how you would shape the largest petals. Okay, now the smaller, more frilly petals we're going to start the same way where we just use our scraper tool. Make sure you're holding the center there. That's a little bit narrow and thin. We don't want to be tugging too hard there because it could tear. So just make sure you're holding at the base and just go through with your scraper tool. We want these all to cup inwards. So we'll do that with all six of these frilly paper sets, petal sets. We're not looking for perfection here because it's all going to change and continue to be shaped. We just want them to all start going in the same direction. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add, we're gonna make these even more ball shaped and kind of close in on themselves, all of these different layers. And so to do that, we are gonna take a little bit of water in a spray bottle. And I like to give just a couple spritzes. You don't want it completely saturated because as you uh, spray that, they will naturally kind of open up and the wetter they are, the um, harder it is to get them back into that ball shape. But now that it's a little bit moist, the ends are going to take this working a little bit better. So you can just kind of push with your fingers. We're trying to get kind of a, a crumpled, balled up 
end on each one of these. So you can use your fingers, or if you've got your ball tool handy, you can kind of crumple it around the ball tool. And we want to work quickly enough that it doesn't completely dry while we're doing this. While it's moist, is the easiest time to work it. If it does dry out, you can spritz it again, but you'll probably need to do uh, the shaping again on anything that you spray with water. All right, so once those are all a little bit, you can see how they're all kind of crumpled inwards, we want to go back and try and get this back into kind of a tightly closed ball. And so we'll just kind of work it with our fingers. Just give it a little squish. This one's kind of nice because if you crumple it, it doesn't, doesn't hurt it at all. So we're trying to get that into a closed ball, kind of like that. And then we'll set it aside to finish drying. And we're going to do exactly the same thing with all six of these layers. We're just going to give it a little spritz and start shaping each petal end kind of into a ball over the ball tool or over your fingers. And so we'll do that with all six layers. Get the centers or the outer edges curled into a ball, a little bit of a ball shape, and then wrap the whole thing into kind of a crumpled ball. I can cut the middle, yeah, losing, or the repetitive stuff, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of a sinking. All right, here we are with our last petal. Let's finish.
crumpling that into a ball. And now what we're going to do is we're going to actually put those layers together onto a wire and start to form us into a flower. So these all closed up fairly nicely. What we're going to do is choose the one that's the most closed. Probably that's the one I'm going to use as the first uh, petal to go on the wire. So if I was doing a full stem, a peony, I would leave this stem at the full length. But since I'm going to be attaching these to a wreath, I don't need them that long. So I'll just cut this in half, set that aside, and I'm going to take my needle nose pliers and form, oops, form a loop at the end and then fold it at a 90 degree angle. So that is just providing more surface area for my glue, for my hot glue, by just making that loop and bending it over. That's going to be the part that is secured to my petal, and it's just the more surface area instead of just a, a straight little piece of wire. All right, so we'll take the end that does not have a loop and take our smallest little bundle here, and we will be opening it up just a little bit so we can find that hole and stick the wire through. And now we're going to get the hot glue gun and put a little bit of hot glue at the base of this uh, flower. It's a little bit hard to see. Try not to burn your fingers and try not to get hot glue on these petals that are folded over. So once there's a blob of glue there, we can press from underneath and that little hook, that little loop should stick pretty well to that hot glue. Now if your petals are completely closed up and you can't see the wire inside, that's great. Um, if you can't get those petals closed enough to hide that wire in the center, this is where we're going to use just a scrap of this paper that we cut out earlier. There's a little bit of extra paper here that I can just crumple up. This is the benefit of having kind of a crumpled looking flower is I can just take a scrap paper and crumple it up find a flat area on the bottom, we're going to glue that flat area inside. And so if people are getting a glimpse inside your flower, they're not going to see the wire. They're just going to see another layer of a little bit of crumpling. So I'll add a little bit more hot glue right in the center there. And just stick that crumpled piece in. You don't even have to have these petals glued over the top, they're just going to kind of hide that as best they can. All right, and so now we're just going to glue each of these layers to this center that we've started. So I'm usually looking for the tightest layers to go first. Find the little hole, stick the wire through. Once you get it up here, it doesn't really matter. I've found that uh, trying to make these all evenly spaced, it doesn't really matter because it's all crumpled and curled inward. So just find a spot as you're looking from the top, make sure it looks pretty good. And then we'll pull a petal back and give it a little bit of glue there. It just needs a little bit to stick that next layer. And then just kind of cup run your fingers up to cup it on there, and then we'll follow with these other layers. We'll slide it on and nestle it up in there. Make sure it looks pretty good. If it looks lopsided or funny from one side, you can kind of rotate that. We don't want any uh, petals to look like they're identically stacked when you're looking from the top. You want them to kind of be distributed. So. That looks good. Another little dab of glue. And we'll grab another layer, another layer. It's 
So these petals will add, well, they'll act just a little bit differently if you're using um, a medium weight cardstock instead of this uh, lighter text weight paper. Um, but you're using the same technique either way. You're folding, curling, crumpling to get it all to look like it's got these fluffy layers. Now, if you get hot glue strings going through here, you can pull them off. Uh, or I've heard that you can use a hot blow dryer and just kind of blow it at the end and it'll get those visible glue strings to disappear. Okay, here's our last of the frilly layers. And so now all we've got are these two larger petal layers. So I'll stick one on. This is where we'll try and make it look good from above. Place one first. And then that second one, we'll try and make it all look evenly distributed. Okay, here's our second layer. And this time you wanna make sure that you're not stacking these petals exactly lined up. You want a petal behind to be filling the gap of the petal in front. So just maneuver that until it looks fairly evenly distributed. Okay, that looks pretty good. One more dab of hot glue. And those are all your red petal layers. All right, so at the base of this petal, and you can actually pull those down a little bit. A lot of times the peony, the lowest petals will fall farther away. Um, you can play with that. And none of your peonies, as you make multiples, none of them will look exactly the same. And that's a good thing. We're gonna take one of these sepal pieces in green, and we're gonna do the same thing we did before, just kind of curl them all down with your scraper tool. And then it's kind of nice to take a couple of these and curl them up a little bit, if you like. They could all fall away, and that's fine. And then we'll slide that also on there. And you probably won't see very much of the green from the top, but it's nice to have that on there just to add a little bit of realism and add that greenery. So another little bit of hot glue. Just to put that in place. And now we have one of our peonies, peonies uh, ready for the wreath. If you wanted to put this just on a stem, you can take this peony leaf and just give it, again, a little bit of curl. And you can just hot glue or use white glue and attach that straight to your paper covered wire. And that would look just beautiful the way it is. Uh, for now, we're gonna save these and use them for our wreath. So I'll get those shaped. And I have already made two other peonies. So the peonies are ready for the wreath. Let's get our holly leaves. If you're using holly leaves to make this a Christmas wreath, we're gonna just shape these really quick. And it might be helpful to have this soft mat again. You can drag a stylus tool along here, or you can just press with your scraper tool, or you can just 
take it and fold it in half with your fingers and give it a crease. Whenever I'm doing an arrangement, I like to uh, group things in odd numbers. And these are probably thin enough you could even stack them and fold two at a time. Okay, and then we will just give a little bit of curl away from the center. Curl it with your fingers if you need to, but the scraper tool is really handy. You just give a little bit of dimension there. And again, you can do multiples stacked together to save a little bit of time. Okay, so let's put this wreath together. So I have a 10 inch metal hoop. Um, these are also used for macrame or for making dream catchers. So if you're doing a search for a metal hoop, um, you can use any of those as search terms. Uh, and you could do larger, you could do smaller, but I'm using 10 inch so it'll look like the example I've presented if you use a 10 inch. It doesn't have to be a metal hoop. You can also use an embroidery hoop. There's all sorts of different hoops you can use. Let me grab my two other peonies. And we're going to cut these a little bit shorter. We don't need that whole wire. So maybe leave about three or four inches of stem. And we're going to start with our uh, peonies. And I'm going to grab this with my uh, pliers and just bend the wire over. That way I'll be able to attach it to the wire, uh, to, the, to the metal hoop to attach this wire to the metal hoop. And then you might want to give it a little bit of a curve so it'll not be straight while your hoop is curved. And we're just going to kind of position these if they all look the same. I might put the largest in the middle. They should look fairly similar to each other. And we can do a kind of a dry fit. I'll we'll probably do three peonies down here at the bottom and one peony leaf pointing up and a couple of them pointing down. And then for the holly leaves, I'm going to put five on each side. So these will just kind of overlap each other a little bit. I'm just throwing these on there right now so you can kind of see how it's going to look. And the trick with the holly leaves will just be to try and get them to look symmetrical when you place those. All right, so the easiest way to attach these wires to the hoop is to use bind wire. This is what it's made for, really. We're just going to use this wire to kind of Twist it and get it to tie in place. Wrap it a few times. And 
And when I'm, and when I'm using the bind wire, we're still able to kind of slide it along the wire, uh, along the hoop. And so I'm just gonna go, keep going. And I can add this other flower. And since it's adjustable, I can look in a minute and see if it looks good from the top. You can try and hot glue straight to the hoop, but like I said, if you're using the bind wire, it's a little easier to continue to adjust it and slide it a little bit. I think it's time to add our greenery. And if you can be a little bit strategic with your greenery, and if there's any of the bind wire showing through on the hoop below, you can kind of try and cover that. I think mine looks pretty good, so I can just slide it on there. If that looks good, then I will hot glue it in place. Nobody's really gonna be looking at this from the back, so we're not too worried about hiding all the glue and wire. We just don't want it to be seen from the front. So we've got some nice greenery there. And if you want no holly leaves, you can cut a bunch more of these peony leaves and fill in. But we do want a little bit extending from each side and make sure that we're covering any of this uh, wire. So I'll glue one. Then I'll kind of try to mirror it on the other side. And we'll just finish up the uh, holly leaves like that. We'll just place one at a time so it looks good and kind of mirror how it looks on the other side. All right, so that looks pretty good. And I've got these little white flowers that we can add if you want them. I like a little bit of white filler on there. So I've got a few cut out. I'm just gonna show you, I've got four made up and I want two clusters of three. So I'll just show you how to make a couple of these little white ones. Again, I'm gonna use my ball shaping tool, but uh, I'm gonna use the smaller end I'm just going to roll that along there to make those kind of curl upwards. And then I'm gonna flip it over and roll just in the center. So then they're a little spread out, but they're still curled over. So roll all on one side and then flip it over and just press a little in the center. And you would make six total uh, of those white flowers. Now for the stem, I've just taken this bind wire and I'm just tying knots in it. It's really thin, so it's easy to tie a knot. So what I would do is just every, I don't know, three or four inches, go along and tie a knot in that and you would make six knots for your six flowers. And when you're done with that, just take your wire cutters and just cut right above that knot. And that leaves you with a little stem and a center. Then 
and we'll just twist that so we can thread it through the hole on the white flower. And if you need to trim it again, or even poke a little pair of tweezers through the hole to make the hole bigger, you can. We're just trying to thread that paper covered bind wire through that hole on the white flower. And then hot glue will probably show up too much and so I just put a little dab of white glue at the base there. When you've got that done, you'll have two sets of three, and they can just be twisted together. Get this last one threaded. And you might be able to, if that's giving you trouble threading that through, you can also add a little bit of glue to the wire there and twist it to glue the base. Let's see. Okay, a little bit of white glue to secure that. And since these are wire, they're really easy to just kind of twist together. And you can bend them so they're kind of facing upwards. And so you'll just have your two sets of three flowers. that can kind of just be either twisted to the wire again or glued in place. You can trim that wire if you need to, but that just gives a little extra detail to your wreath to make it look nice. I would spend the time positioning that and gluing it in place, but this is my finished one from earlier. You can see how those are all just um, attached there to just make it look a little prettier. So here we have our finished Christmas peony wreath. And if you have questions about the project, go ahead and list those in the comments. Uh, I will also, uh, if you go to my blog, findingtimetocreate.com and search Christmas peony wreath, you'll also find a supply list and uh, written instructions to go along with this video. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed this project. It's a great one for uh, any season, depending on what elements you choose to put on it. And you can change the colors, anything you like. Thanks for joining me today and we'll see you again next time.